when we're talking about large language models, there's this idea of fine tuning where if we have a model that we don't like it, we can do something to it to make it work a little bit better. To understand fine tuning and the ways we can fine tune it, let's just talk about the components that, that are involved in fine tuning. And so we have to first take a look at hidden layers and its components. So when training, you have layers of nodes, also called neurons, so think like your brain. And between these nodes, there are going to be connections. And so connections are often between or across layers, uh, but connections can also be within the same layer. And that's where we get this concept of self-attention. If you remember, the concept of attention is really important when we're talking about transformers for large language models. And I mean, if we represent it, it'd be more like it's connecting back to itself. And that's why we call it self-attention because it's a layer that feeds back into itself, uh, which is self-attention, okay? But connections could also uh, be where we have multiple sets of hidden layers uh, and these connections are computed in parallel. So the idea, I'm gonna just draw this here, but imagine we have another layer with nodes, right? And the idea is that this one will feed into that one but this one's coming from here. And so now we, it's called multi-head attention because it's coming from multiple sources. And in fact, some of these, they'll come all the way back here and go like this and, and feed in. So, you know, that is ways that we can uh, uh, feed our data forward. Uh, then we have parameters. So parameters are the weights of connections. So um, over here on the right-hand side, I get my pen tool out again, we have a weight. And this weight is the representation of this connection between these two nodes. And so that's gonna be a value. And so a connection might have one parameter, but they can also have multiple parameters. Most cases it's one parameter, but you can imagine that for the amount of nodes that you have in each layer, they're gonna to have to connect to all the other ones in the next layer, and that's gonna add up really quickly. Let's take a look at some um, uh, transformer models or large language models and understand how many layers they're utilizing for training to get perspective. So let's take a look at GPT-3. So GPT-3 is not new. Um, in fact, it is one of the smaller models that you can train still, um, like Babbage or DaVinci. If you go, like, let's say, use Microsoft um, Azure AI Studio and you want to do fine tuning, you can train GPT-3 models. And it has 96 layers, or at its large, uh, uh, at, and if we think about its parameters, that's 175 billion parameters. So you can only imagine how many uh, nodes or connections are going on in there, but that's how many there are. Um, and then we have BERT. So BERT has 12 layers or up to 24 layers. So BERT is uh, still useful. It's a, um, a much simpler uh, transformer that we can utilize. We have GPT-2, which has between 12 to 48 layers. So the same or more as BERT. Then you have Google's T5, which has 12 encoder and 12 decoder layers or up to 24 layers there. So, you know, if we're, if we're talking about fine tuning, it's gonna be tweaking the amount of layers, uh, the, 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 the amount of connections we're going to train and things like that. But let's go define what is fine tuning. So fine tuning is retraining a pre-trained model's weights or its parameters on a smaller data set. So a model's weights is the outputted state of a model. But in this case, when we're talking about fine tuning, we're talking about a trained model's output, okay? So then what is supervised fine tuning, SFT? This is where when we provide the data set, it's already been labeled, right? So imagine we have um, a bunch of cats at, or like photos of animals. And so we're labeling what each animal is so that when the, um, the model is training, it's like it has a cheat sheet to know how uh, to understand exactly what it is that it has, okay? But so we're basically explicitly telling the model what the data is, as opposed to when we train our base model, that might be unsupervised, uh, where we're not saying, oh, this is what this is, right? Because we're giving lot. imagine trying to do supervised training on a huge data set, like labeling all, that would be very difficult. So the idea is that um, we will produce our base model uh, first, or in the case of LLMs, the base model is the foundational model. So you're taking an existing model, a, a, a foundational model, and then we're going to train it. As soon as we have a foundational model or base model and we decide to fine tune it, now it's being called a pre-trained model. Okay, so understand those terms. We have FM, okay, base model, pre-trained model. They're all in the same area. They don't necessarily mean exactly the same thing, but they represent the same thing at this place in time. So we're get ready to take our base model and fine tune it. So we're going to bring in our smaller data set. I'm just gonna uh, clear all the ink off the screen here. 
And so the idea here is that um, we we'll bring in that data set, and now we're going to train it, retrain it, uh, and produce our fine-tuned model. Now, when I say we're producing these models or we're outputting these models, we're not actually outputting models. We're outputting the model's weights, okay? We're not creating new models. We're just uh, creating new outputted states of the model. Um, and just understand that that is, it often sounds like we're creating new code or something, but that's not necessarily true. So let's now talk about the types of fine tuning we can do, because there's a lot of approaches we can take to fine tuning. Um, so, and this is not even exhaustive, but the first, let's talk about changing the data set. So the data set itself, the data you're gonna put in there, we could do instruction fine tuning. That's where we take a data set and we tell exactly what we want as, uh, like let's say we say, I say this, you do that. So you're giving an example of what a person says and what the outcome is. So that's instruction fine tuning. Uh, then we have domain specific fine tuning. That's where you're taking uh, a, knowledge, a knowledge base or a data set of specific knowledge to update the model on that knowledge or to make it uh, focus more on that knowledge set, right? So if we had a generic LLM and we wanted to make it specifically for learning cloud computing, I could load it up with the most up-to-date um, uh, cloud data or even my own stuff to make it teach like I would teach, okay? Then we have changing the method of training. So we have full fine tuning. This is where all the model's weights are updated and it's expensive. So you say full fine tuning, we can just think of it as traditional fine tuning. It, you're basically taking the existing existing model, model's weights, af, like after the base tune as the starting point and running it through the training process again. Now you can add these two things together, right? You can um, do full fine tuning and change the data set. They're, they're, uh, they're, they can be done together or both separately. It's up to you. We have parameter efficient fine tuning, so also known as PEFT. You'll see this term come up a lot. Uh, it only updates a small set of parameters during the training and freezes the rest of the parameters. There is a subset of PEFT called LoRa, which we're not going to talk too much about here, but I'm just going to get you exposure to this. If you are not needing to update every sing para a single parameter, then you're going to save money there. Another way is uh, last layer fine tuning. This is where you will freeze all the layers except the last layer. And when we say freeze, we just mean we're saving the state at that point in time, right? Or we're telling it to skip until it gets to the last step. Um, and then we're basically just training it on a single layer. And apparently that works really well. So there's a lot of things that we can do. Another thing we can do is we can do pruning. So this is where you're removing parameters, all right? You're, and people might wanna do this just to make the model smaller and more efficient because um, maybe we can remove parameters and it will uh, use less compute or be faster um, for, uh, for some trade-offs. And there's two ways we can do this, time train time pruning. So somehow we are making the model to encourage to drop or remove connections or neurons during training or post training pruning, which is basically you mangling the, the model weights file, the, the file that's outputted. So yeah, a lot of options here, but uh, there you go.